Hey, look, a jacket. Wonder who it belongs to. No name. There's a QR code. Let me scan it to figure more about it. Andrew Hennessy, 11. That's me. I even know I'd lost my jacket. Good to have it back. As you can tell by the screen, my name is Andrew Hennessy, and both my parents have been emailed that my jacket has been found. <laughs> what I've just demonstrated is an example of a system that uses QR codes and email notifications to improve the lost and found system that we know today. This is why my TED Talk was called Turning Lost into Found. Let's back up to the problem and work forward. I'd like to ask a question. Has anybody ever lost a jacket at school, work, or a sporting event? I figure as much it's a universal problem. So here's exhibit A, the dreaded Trinity lost and found. Mind you, this picture was taken five days after school began in late August. And in December, the, jacket, the lost and found looked like the inside of a spin art machine. I guess this uh, scene is repeated all across America, and Canada as well. The only difference being that the jackets are a lot bigger in Canada. <laughs> so w what's the problem? Here at the Lost and Found, under the stairwell, jackets are just thrown aimlessly. Many things look alike. And since there's a uniform at Trinity, you can't tell the difference between Bob or Sue's jacket. The space isn't so intimidating. Their jackets piled up beyond your heads. You can't find your bearings. And is it there or not? Sometimes you say to yourself, maybe I left my jacket on the playground. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's in the Lost and Found. Well, I don't have any time to go and get it. Who cares? Well, my solution covers four topics which uh, eradicate the problem. First of, uh, is logistics, so getting lost jackets back to their owners. Identification and separation, figuring out whose jacket is whose, and then figuring out who their teacher is and which grade they're in. Communications, the heart and soul of this whole solution. So that's notifying your parents and your teachers that your jacket has been found so you can be notified to get your jacket. And elaborating on that is accountability. So once you've been notified that your jacket has been found, you follow through and get it from the lost and found. So at the core of my solution is a QR code. Well, what is a QR code? They've been showing up everywhere from the ads in the Vancouver airport to the code stamped on your ticket and even magazine ads. What's so different about a QR code and a UPC code? If you look at a UPC code or 1D barcode, it only stores information horizontally on these vertical bars. We you look at a QR code up here, or 2D code, it stores information on both planes, vertically and horizontally. In my case, I'm able to store emails and a person's name and other information on one code, so in scan, can provide the right amount of information to the right people. So, how did I get all these codes printed out? Well, it's as simple as clicking on the QR code generator on quickmark.com. You just input your email, like Andrew Hennessy at Westminster.net, the subject, like mm, your jacket has been found, and the content, like what grade you're in, and so forth. From there, we have, I had to find some way to scan all these jackets. I have two ways of doing it, an iPhone using a QuickMark app, and this card over here. These are both very intuitive systems that work well with students. Well, how, how did I get all these jackets? How did I get all these codes in the jackets? Well, it's fairly simple. I just printed them out on a sheet, shown right here, and then they were cut out and then pasted in the jackets with heat from an iron or maybe a heat gun. Here's a closer look. Now for the process. Now up here is a cart that I devised for a whole school process. So this would be used at a school. It has a computer for optical scanning and different bins for different grades. So for example, this is a scaled down version for my presentation. Somebody comes up, they scan the jacket, but they first initiate the app. A quick sign notifies the scanner that their jacket has been scanned. And then, but then they click on an icon which selects email, and from there, they hit send. But between the time they hit send and the time they scan it, what do they do? Well, they, from the information posted up here, they acknowledge that Andrew's in the seventh grade. So they drop it, 
in the seventh grade bin. Easy. More found, less miss. What does this mean? To me, it means less cycle time. But many people don't associate that with loss and founds. It's actually highly critical. With the traditional loss and found, you get a dose of you know, 50 jackets on one day. And for two months, they won't be found, increasing the amount of stuff in the loss and found. With my system, I'm able to reduce that amount of cycle time and stuff in the loss and found. So when a jacket is logged, people are notified instantly and so they can get their jacket the day of or the day after, decreasing the amount of stuff in the lost and found. It also helps for people to find remaining items in the lost and found. What, what did I learn throughout my whole process? I learned that I should break the problem down and attack each item by itself. Keep the solution simple. Remember, technology by itself is never the answer. In my case, I had to combine students to find jackets and technology in locomotion to create the most forward-moving lost and found system ever created. Great ideas just don't happen. They have to be sold. I had to be persuasive in my thoughts and like I was pitching something to many people, including Headmaster, Megan Howard, peers, and even my parents. And it helps to have an advocate or a mentor. So you could do a project all by yourself. It would be very hard. So along my way, I had an advocate to help me. Believe in your idea and be passionate. You might come to some people who say nay nay or about your idea, but you have to stay passionate and keep going th with your idea. This segment is about empowering kids to build with creativity, to build a better mousetrap. In my case, the mousetrap was completely broken, and I had to turn a student problem into a student-led solution. Before I leave today, I'd like to scan one more code to say goodbye. Thank you for letting me present today.